Oh, hi guys, I, I don't mind me, I'm just writing an article for Slate about how Christians have a creepy obsession with cuties. You know, over the last couple days, they've been tweeting about it, this, this hashtag cancel Netflix over just this film. It doesn't make any sense to me, honestly, it's kind of creepy, so I'm writing an article for Slate right now, and um, you know, in my research, I found out that the, the actual the person who made this film is deeply feminist, and it is deeply feminist ideas within the movie so honestly I just think man Christians are just creepy and and obsessed with kind of like this whole you know they're calling it child pornography I'm like oh my goodness are you kidding me yes little girls are twerking in this video and yes people are doing close-ups on you know their private areas in these films but it's like are you kidding me right now they're a little bit creepy and obsessed with it and I just think I don't know okay are you kidding me right now this is not a joke this is not, I'm like blown away. Like, are you joking right now? Slate just put out an article. Christian's creepy obsession with cuties explained. Are you kidding me? The fact that people like myself are pointing out that this movie is insanely sexual exploitative of these young girls that you are filming and you're caught trying to pass it off as a feminist a deeply feminist film are you joking are you joking right now because look like they try to pass it off as oh you know the one of the main girls that is, uh, you know, part of the, the film, she was in kind of a sexually repressed um, community in the Islamic community, and, and she wanted to break free from that, and that was like, and then she went to kind of the hypersexualized Western culture, and this, this film is supposed to be a commentary on that. It's supposed to point out, oh man, you know, you know, people, people are, this is not good for women, because, you know, women should have control, you know, and uh, be, get to do what they want to do, and it's supposed to be this feminist film. Well, look, in your dang film, you're exploiting little girls. I'm sorry if I'm getting angry about that. I'm sorry if you think that's creepy that we're upset that little girls are getting exploited, that this is something that people are watching, that this is something that somebody has put out as some sort of social statement, like, oh, watch this, because, you know, this is crazy, isn't it? Look, we don't need to watch this stuff. We have lost our any sense of shame and like, look, there is, there is, when, when, when we become a Christian, when you become a Christian, and if you're not a Christian, you will, you, you might not understand this, but when you become a Christian, all that shame and guilt that has been laying on you is on Christ because he has taken that punishment for us. We don't have to bear that weight anymore. But when you look in the garden of, of, of you know, of Eden with Adam and Eve, when they noticed that they, when they had sinned against God, they noticed that they were naked and there was shame as a part of that. Shame comes from sin, right? We see that clearly. When you become desensitized to sin, you lose and begin that, that shame desensitized. And that shame is a signal that we need to turn to God. We, that guilt is a, a signal we need to turn to God, not uh, block it out even more and say, no, we get to do what we want. This is a feminist film. Because look, any kind of idea that sexual liberation is like a good thing for women is completely wrong. And, and the reason it's wrong is because it is completely against what God has laid out for us. It's not just this idea of, of breaking free from all cultural and social constructs of sexuality and doing what you want. No, it's about doing what God has ordained and designed us for. But I don't want to just stop at, at cuties, okay? I don't want to stop there. I want us to evaluate our social media in general. Um, look at TikTok, okay? I'm on TikTok. Uh, it's what, my biggest platform there. But if you are on the For You page where you can just see whatever people are, are, are posting, you are continually confronted by little girls, honestly, doing very pr provocative dancing. And it is disgusting. Disgusting. You're continually confronted by that and you're trying to get rid of it and you're like, but TikTok keeps feeding it and the algorithm keeps trying to get, like, it, it is wild. And some of the biggest people on this platform that are kind of portraying themselves as wholesome and, and you know, viewer friendly and family friendly, these people are like, what? We, we've lost all sense of, of, of of shame and of, hey, maybe you shouldn't do those sexually provocative dances because look, this is, man, 
have we lost all all standard like a god's standard of, of what is good and what is wrong because it blows my mind some of the parents of of these kids that are big on tiktok okay and and doing these insanely like provocative dances and you're just like get on your screen like oh get that off my screen like it'd be something where if you were watching that right and and somebody was looking over your shoulder you're like what are you watching especially of a child but yet these parents of of cuties and of what whatever was going on with that and people on tiktok as well it's like who where are these these kids parents where they're stepping in and saying hey you know what you, that that's not for you this is this is not right for you right like this is this is this is wrong um like you you, you don't necessarily know what you're doing here and and i'm going to be the parent the mature parent that's going to tell you what's up what's going on what's right what's wrong but but we've lost that and i think parents this is kind of a, a um, it's a telltale sign that parents in our culture without god they've lost that standard for themselves so when they see their their daughter doing these just honestly like a lot of the times like if you saw the wop dance like my goodness this is insane what what is going on but it but the reason that the gap is so wide between people that are saying this is insane like me and people that says oh that's fine you're just sexual you're you know you're the one sexualizing them the reason that gap is so wide is because we're standing on different foundations right they're standing on their their kind of subjective progressive you know whatever the culture kind of sees is right and wrong this is what's right and wrong and we're standing on the bible over here and this gap is wide because we're standing on different foundations okay but let's get our head on straight for a second okay we're angry we're frustrated why you know wh how could christians be called creepy by you know denouncing really disgusting just really like child pornography you know and like how how could that even happen and we're frustrated and we're angry we got to go back to core foundation principles, right? What are you doing within your family? How are you raising up your own family with an education within your own church, your siblings, your spouse, like all these things are foundational begin with you, right? Cause culture, like all these, these massive things, you're not going to be able to change all this, right? You're not going to be able to shift the zeitgeist of the age, but you can begin with you. You can begin with your family, sticking to the word of God, reading the word of God, teaching the word of God, meditating on the word of God day and night. And look, that is where we need to begin. We need to get back to the word of God because I mean, there's a lot of people that want to say their hot takes and want to say, you know, the culture is shifting or people like Ben Shapiro who, who points out the flaws and, you know, liberals arguments and all that. And that's, that's fine. And that's nice. But look, Ben Shapiro doesn't believe the gospel. We have an actual, you know, uh, purpose for why this is wrong. The grace that God has to save us from this kind of sin. This is where we're going. We're, we're raising up our children. We're, we're moving our families towards more and more to be like Christ. And we're preaching the gospel and we're speaking into these cultural issues with prophetic truth, gospel centered, um, preaching, teaching conversations. That's where, that's where we're at. Let me just talk to you. If you think cuties and, and you know, immorality is wrong and exploitation of children is wrong and you're ready to speak on that, you're not being creepy. Don't worry about it. You're you're sticking <laughs> to the truth. Keep speaking the truth. Don't let people on Slate tell you that you're creepy for <laughs> wild, wild, wild. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy, um, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe because I'm making new videos all the time. And if you want to support my ministry, head on over to dailydisciple.ca slash club. Join the club today and you will be an essential part in really helping this channel go and grow. So thank you so much for that. And I will see you next time. God bless.
and you're wondering, what is daily disciple ministry all about? I'll tell you. My life mission is to encourage, inspire, and challenge people to follow Jesus daily as a disciple. I want to authentically engage with our doubts, struggles, and questions as we seek to encounter Jesus in our daily lives. I'm a 21-year-old guy, and I don't know everything, not even close. But my hope is that as we dig into scripture and we talk about issues of life and culture, that you'd move that much closer in relationship to Jesus.